Hey everybody. Okay, so one of our first assignments in eighth grade is a goal setting assignment. And we're gonna try and lead into goal setting with, uh, with an analogy to start, all right? So right there at home on your Chromebooks, you're gonna need to open up a Google Doc. So let's open up a fresh new Google Doc. And we're gonna type out two sentences to begin and then you'll work that into this big file that you see called a wellness plan, all right? So new Google Doc, two sentences to script out. These will be kind of rough drafts. I'm gonna talk you through as you go. Um, and then I'll tell you when to pause and then come back or whatever you need to do. Uh, maybe you can even leave this run in the background if you're quick, okay? So get a Google Doc going. And while you're opening that up, so you know what we're talking about. An analogy is a comparison between items that are otherwise dissimilar. All right, dissimilar means not similar. So we've got seven items for you to choose from today that are gonna compare you to that inanimate object. Um, and you're gonna choose one of these seven based on the looks of the item, based on its function, uh, and also based on your positive characteristics. So I'm gonna swing this camera around. We're gonna look here at our seven choices and I'll bring them closer, okay? Hold on, Chaser, I'm talking to the students right now. Okay, so analogy and uh, comparison between you and one of these seven items, okay? And this is gonna start the first sentence, but first, let's check out your options. Your first option is a drumstick. This is just a regular old drumstick, in case we got any percussionists out there. It's a Vic Firth drumstick, not that that matters, okay. You can choose a drumstick. You can choose a tennis ball. Any of you have pets out there like me? You ever do one of these with the, your pet? And they're like, <laughs> they're looking for it, right? Like dogs. Okay, anyway. Tennis ball. You can choose a plastic cup from the greatest and worst baseball team in history. I can say that because I'm a Cubs fan. Now you can ignore the fact that it's a Cubs cup or you can focus on that, doesn't much matter. But you've got your option here of a plastic cup you can choose toy blocks, which I stole from my kids. They'll never know. <laughs> I learned something while becoming a parent. I learned, that, I learned that kids don't know how to dump bins out in order to get things out of bins. They go into it, you know, and then their heavy head just has them kind of flailing with their feet up in the air. And then they cry. I'm like, you're the one that got in there. And then when they do learn how to dump out bins, it's funny because they don't know how to dump away from themselves. So they take the bin and they just dump it on top of themselves. And then they cry again. <laughs> and then finally, when they realize how to dump away, then that's the point where I can steal some toy blocks to use. Okay, anyway, so far. Drumstick, tennis ball, plastic cup, toy blocks. You can choose this Matchbox car. It's called a Matchbox car as a brand name. They're kind of like Hot Wheels cars. It's so small that it can fit into a matchbox. That's where the term comes from. I chose this because it's my daughter's favorite color, or it used to be. It's hard to see on there, but it's not actually black. It's purple. When Elliot was young, she liked purple, but she couldn't speak very well. So she would call, hey, Chaser, we're talking. You want to come on the video? No. No? So when people would say, hi, what's your name? This is how all old people act. They're kind of creepy, you know, old people. Uh, they, they always come up to little kids and they ask the same exact questions, you know? They're like, hi, what's your name? All up in their face. Hi, little girl, what's your name? And then Elliot would have to look up and she'd go, Elliot, <laughs> right? <laughs> and people would look at me, you named your daughter Elliot? And I was like, yeah, that's right. We named our daughter Elliot. You know? And they always have the same exact questions. What's your, they always ask the same second question. How old are you? So what would you say? Five. Five. Do you have a birthday coming up? Yeah. Yeah, so she's going to be six soon. But when she was little, she'd say stuff like, I'm fui. Because she couldn't speak, you know. And then they always ask the same third question because old people don't know what to ask. So they'd ask what your name is and then... How old are you? And then they have to think of a great question to talk about that young kids would know. So they always ask the same question. What's your favorite color? So she'd look up and she would say purple, but she couldn't pronounce purple. So she'd say poo poo. <laughs> and then they look at me like I'm the weird one. I'm like, she's three. She can't say purple. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Elliot.
Yes, in just a couple minutes, okay, Chase? Okay, drumstick, tennis ball, plastic cup, toy blocks, matchbox car, which, by the way, I love this one in case, this is a good choice. I don't know if you can see the table. It's like those low riders with the hydraulics that come down the and they rattle the whole street, you know? You ever see those cars that can bounce with the hydraulics? Anyway, it looks a little bit like a low rider. Let's move on. Chase, you got give me a minute. Okay, last two options. You can choose a monkey dude. I didn't know a better name than a monkey dude. It's from uh, the old Barrel of Monkeys games. Blah, blah, blah. Monkey dude. And you can choose a regular old backpack. backpack. A bag. Okay, your choice is seven oh, items. Yeah. Now, your sentence is going to be, I am like a blank because blank. So I'm gonna switch this around. I'll give you a picture on Google Classroom so you can see those items a little closer. We can't see you're underneath, that's okay though. All right, so watch this. Here's how your first sentence goes. I am like a blank because, so if I choose, so I've got my choice on all seven. All right, so you're gonna type out which item you choose and why. So you just fill in the blank. This part is, seems easy, but it's not that easy because you've got to make that decision on why you chose that item. It needs to be positive, right? It can't be, I'm like a drumstick because people beat me up. Okay, if that's the truth, let us know. We gotta get you some help, okay? It needs to be something. Okay, hold on just a sec. All right, now let me talk to Okay, we're back. It should be something that's a little deeper than, what did one student come up with one quarter? He goes, uh, I'm like a tennis ball because I'm yellow and fuzzy. And we were like, what, what does that even mean? Even if that's true, we're looking for something a little bit deeper than just, I'm like a matchbox car because I, got, I like to go fast. What, I don't, what are you talking about? Fast through life? I'm like a drumstick because I like music. That's fine, but we're looking for something a little deeper. An analogy is a comparison between you and this inanimate object, so check it out. If I choose drumstick, I could go with any of them, but let's go with drumstick. Because you're not a drumstick. Right, because I'm not really a drumstick. <laughs> but I'm going to dive into something that I'm good at, a positive characteristic. I'm like a drumstick because... I keep a, because I keep a good rhythm while I run, which is true. I used to coach cross country and track for a long, long time, and I'm not the best in the world, but I can keep a pretty good pace. So notice how it's a little, an analogy is a little bit cheesy, it's a little bit corny. However, it's talking about your positive characteristics. So we could have done any of these. I'm like a tennis ball because maybe you're thinking I bounce back after tough times. Or I'm like a plastic cup, maybe that's the best one. Why? What the, what's the purpose? What's the function of the plastic cup? Maybe the toy blocks are the best one because you build on others' ideas. Maybe you're like a monkey dude because you swing from group of friends to group of friends and you keep up with every activity. Maybe you're like a backpack because you carry the weight of uh, your family on your shoulders. I mean, there's a lot of great things you could go with all of these seven. I don't want to tell you what to write. You type out your first sentence. Okay, next part. Once you have your analogy item, we want to be able to say and state where your sentence fits into our life triangle. If we write health triangle, you know that there are three main parts of life. We have physical, we have mental, and we have social well-being. If you can't place your sentence into one of those, you went too generic, you went too broad. For me, you can see, I'm like a drumstick because I keep a good rhythm while I, while I run. That's pretty much a physical health part of life, isn't it? However, what if I'm running with friends or family? All right, I've got a social health piece too. What if I beat people in races, which I like to do, because I'm competitive? I'm so competitive, I like to beat my kids in like checkers. <laughs> you ever play Uno? That's the, one of the greatest games that I'm at. Because I love to cheat. You ever play Uno? 
Sometimes there's like a different card for a color. I love how there's like, a, there could be like a yellow seven showing and while nobody's looking, I'll just throw like a red nine and everybody else is like, oh, it's red now. <laughs> anyway, if you're competitive like me, look, this part of life, running could also be mental health. Notice I didn't say something that was mean or I didn't say something that negatively impacted somebody else's health. Okay, once you have your analogy item and you can fit it into a part of life, you're ready for sentence two. Sentence two is now going to drop the focus on what you're good at. The analogy item got you thinking about your positive characteristics. It kind of tricked you into thinking and writing down what it is you're good at. Not the best ever, but just pretty good at. And now sentence two is what aren't you that great at? What do you want to improve? So you're going to start off sentence two with I would like to. And then you fill in the blank. What is it that you want to do that is a wish in life? What aren't you that great at? Now you can focus on the same thing from before. Like for me, I'm going to, for the sake of the example, I'm going to focus on running still, but you don't have to. You can take that analogy item and say, well, I'm good at that part of life, but now I want to improve at a different part of life. I wish I was better at, and you kind of fill in the blank. I would like to, I'm gonna focus on running, improve my speed in order to finish races faster. This is true whether I was teaching health class or not. I would like to improve my speed. I was a runner for a long time. I ran 5Ks, 10Ks. I even have a marathon story I might tell you if we get back in the classroom. But this is something I would do no matter what. So I want your wish to be something that you would work on, even if you didn't have health class. Okay, quick pause as you think about your wish, and then we're going to come back for the very last part of today. All right, pause. Write your second sentence now. All right, so here's my analogy. This is my first sentence. I'm like a drumstick because I keep a good rhythm when I run. Here's my wish. I would like to improve my speed in order to finish races faster, but we're not quite done yet. We want to take this wish and turn it into a goal. So we're going to use the SMART acronym that a lot of you have seen before, and we're going to turn this wish into a goal. I'm going to add a couple of details, and I'll show you how. I would like to improve my speed. So there's my wish. It's the same. But now I'm going to add a couple of details by, look at that transitional word, your ELA teacher would be so proud of me, working on sprints, strength, and agility in order to finish races faster is still there. It's kind of the bare bones of my goal. It was, it's in the wish. And now I've added a time piece by the end of May. So I've given myself a little time. Now this is something I could do. Even with the virus, I'm going to be able to exercise. You're going to try and figure out something that you can do with your limited access to other people in the next month and we'll have to find out a good time frame on this we'll just see what's going on we'll see if we're back in school ever so your goal should be something that's attainable even despite the fact that you're stuck inside for the majority of the day how did i do this okay so i'll come back to that in just a sec how did i get my smart goal i use the smart acronym i'm going to post this image on google classroom as well so you have a picture of all the analogies and now you've got an image that helps you out. You're going to take your wish and add a little bit of specifics. All I did was add a couple of things. I would like to, and I put improve my speed, and here's the details, by working on sprint strength and agility. We're going to make sure that it's measurable. So besides adding details to your wish, we want to know how you get better at this goal. So I put that. It's right here. I would like to finish races faster. That's how I'm going to measure it. It was already a part of that. Yours might need that measurement piece, okay? Attainable. This is definitely something that was already possible for me. This is achievable. Your goal should be something that you can do, whether it's within the next month or by the end of life. I didn't write down that I'm going to run the 100 meter dash world record. I'm gonna beat Usain Bolt's world record. I didn't write down that I'm gonna win the Chicago Marathon next year. Now, mine is just simply I'm improving myself. And then I added a time piece on there. It was already relevant because I wrote it for myself and not for anybody else. So then I had to make sure I got a timepiece. That's in blue. I gave myself until the end of May. So you're going to take your wish. You're going to add in specifics. You're going to make sure it's measurable. Most of our mistakes from eighth graders, the goal is not measurable. They don't have a way to measure it. They say, I'd like to uh, improve my social health. And that, that's their goal. Well, it's lacking details, first of all. But also, how do you measure it? 
Can you put that you're going to have check-ins every single week online? That you're hanging out with friends when the time comes that you can hang out again in real life? Sometimes people don't have a timepiece on there. They say stuff like, I want to improve on uh, my basketball skills. Yeah, okay. Well, what's the details, first of all? But also, when's it going to happen by? I have my time period in there. So biggest mistakes from eighth graders are it's not measurable and it's not timely. All right, so take a look at that image and make sure we got the measurable part and the timely part. Cool? Okay, that's it for now. We just wrote uh, two sentences. We want your analogy item. We want your goal. So we took your wish and turned it into a goal. And we're going to plug that into our wellness plan next. So you're going to see a spot to type that out. You're going to see that I have the instructions in Google Classroom as well. You take your goal first. So we'll flip-flop it. That's the start of your action plan. And then we're going to take your analogy item and we'll put it down on the pledge to wellness. Uh, in, the, in the wellness plan packet on Google Classroom. You'll type it in there and we're on our way. All right, look for some other instructions as to how to get going on this so that we start within the next week. We start working pretty much right away. That's it for our work for this week, for Friday at least. Notice how simple that was, just a couple of sentences, thanks to my helpers. Plus this gets us set up for success for the rest of the quarter if and when I see you in person, okay? All right, take care for now.